finish this sentence if you could. In 10 years, I will be. It's been a long time. Uh, 32 and, whoa, that's such a hard question. This feels like it's more than music now. This... I have no idea. I just really don't want to do this after people get tired of me. I want to know when that line is. It's been a long time coming back. Entertainer, storyteller, mogul and global phenomenon, Taylor Swift reigns supreme. As of 2024, her influence is unmatched. <laughs> Taylor Swift is officially a billionaire, billionaire artist. 2023 Vienna. time person of the year. Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift for Midnight. Mind blown. Thank you so much. Taylor, mate, at 19 you've achieved so much. With all the achievement, do you check things off like cover of the Rolling Stone? When I accomplish a goal, I replace it with something just a little higher. My next one is to, you know, get to play all over the world, and that's starting to happen now. Happen now. Welcome to the Eras Tour. The Eras Tour will reach 146 countries, estimated to gross two billion US dollars once it wraps up. Her closest competition, Elton John, who did 330 shows during his farewell Yellow Brick Road tour, grossing US 939 million dollars. We're about to go on a little adventure together, and that adventure is going to span 17 years of music. The Eras to a film is now the most profitable concert film of all time, grossing over 260 million US dollars. Taylor Swift wrapping up the US leg of her Eras tour with a bang, surprising each of the 50 plus truck drivers on her tour with bonus checks. Her influence has coined a new term, Swiftonomics, which refers to how Tay Tay's sold out shows have positively influenced the health of economies globally. In the US, fans have reportedly spent an average of $1,300 on tickets, travel and clothes to attend the tour, implying that the Eras tour could raise $4.6 billion in consumer spending and consequently save the US from recession. Merch alone from her Sydney and Melbourne legs are expected to inject Aussie $140 million. You can do anything you want, Taylor Swift. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> you look beautiful today, Miss Taylor. The Iron Curtain between East Germany and West Berlin has come tumbling down. As the world ushered in a new era, Taylor Swift was born into rural Pennsylvania and quickly became drawn to music. I am happy. Well, I started writing songs when I was 12. Uh, I started writing songs when the guy who came over to fix my computer had a guitar with him because he had just come from a show. And he asked me if I wanted to learn a few guitar chords, and I said, yeah. This is a song I wrote yesterday. Her family's move to Nashville ignited a flame, with Swift embracing the country music capital and signing her first publishing deal at 14. Two years later, Tay-Tay released her first self-titled debut album, Taylor Swift. And I wrote every song on the album, so I'm pretty excited about it. And let me, seriously, if we're doing show and tell, this, my friends, is my gold record. By December 2009, Swift had spent 157 weeks on the Billboard 200, more than any album that decade. The brain development in your 20s is apparently like crazy, so yeah, I want to soak in as much as I possibly can and just continue to learn and continue to be different from what I've been and somehow end up where I'm going. Swift would go on to release 10 original albums by 2023, with each one achieving gold and platinum status. <laughs> I write these moments in time. The songs are written when I'm feeling what it is I'm discussing in the song. So it's all sort of done uh, when it's happening. Right. And is, is it was I right when I alluded to uh, the biographical nature of, of uh, the, some of the romantic uh, circumstances uh, depicted in the song? Who are you seeing at the moment? Um, I don't really talk about that. I just well, why kinda... not? What's wrong with you? So you continue to, uh, to write about ex-boyfriends 
You would think that people would be scared to even be near you because you... <laughs> You so, didn't actually officially date him, no? No, not actually officially. I would much rather my personal life be sung about. I think it sounds nicer that way. Since her career began, the public and media have been obsessed with Taylor's love life. She dated Joe Jonas, Taylor Lautner, John Mayer, Jake Gyllenhaal, Harry Styles, Calvin Harris, Tom Hiddleston and Joe Alwyn, with the relationships going on to dominate tabloid headlines as well as play a big part in shaping the narrative of her music. You might think I'd bring up Joe, that guy who broke up with me on the phone, but I'm not gonna mention him in my monologue. Hey Joe, I'm doing real well. Taylor Swift is the last person to know she's Taylor Swift. Her time with Rockstar Mayer inspired her hit song, Dear John, while her brief stint with Love and Other Drugs actor Gyllenhaal was rumored to influence hit song All Too Well. Taylor Swift concerts, there are friendship bracelets, but I wanted to give Taylor Swift one with my number on it. Walking in zone, there it is, a touchdown to Kelsey. Her influence in relationships have had real-world consequences as well. Her current flame with NFL star Travis Kelsey has seen game attendance skyrocket and Kansas Kelsey jersey sales jump up 400%. But if this guy you're with at the moment, if it turns out to be just a happy relationship, then that kind of ends. Don't ask me that question, it makes me so sad. But you see, but you're getting these great songs out of breakups. Oh, come on. These days, the songwriter's best friend is her iPhone. I just pick up my phone, I go to a corner of the room and I'm like, I swear it's a fan's phone, I it's a The dawn of the millennium saw the rise of technology and social media innovation, directly connecting to fans and controlling her narrative. The most incredible thing to reach that many people with one tweet. I want them to know that they're the only thing that makes me feel like my life is normal. So I want to say thank you to the fans. Bye telling you a secret that I've been keeping from you for the last two years, which is that my brand new album, it's called The Tortured Poets Department. I'm gonna go and post the cover right now backstage. Taylor Swift comes out against Trump. Let's say that I like Taylor's music about 25% less. I don't care if they write that. I'm sad that I didn't two years ago. US politics got a glimpse of the Swift effect when she publicly endorsed two Democratic candidates on social media in 2018, aligning herself to fight for LGBTQ rights, gender equality, and anti-racism in the US. It is so frilly and spineless of me to stand on stage and go, Happy Pride Month, you guys, and then not say this. The post saw over 300,000 likes in the first hour of posting alone and 65,000 voter registrations in the 24-hour period. That this award and every single award given out tonight were voted on by the people, and you know what else is voted on by the people? It hasn't all been positive, though. The fame has certainly had its downsides. Taylor Swift is one dollar richer tonight following a federal trial in Denver. A jury decided the former radio DJ David Mueller did grab Swift's backside during a meet and greet in 2013. Having a magnifying glass on my life has been a good thing and kind of a, a difficult thing at times because you feel like you literally just can't get away with anything. Happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. When Kanye West stole her limelight at the 2009 VMAs, the clip quickly became the most seen video of the year. Are you still a fan? I take it now. You know, I just, I don't know him and I don't want to start anything. Tay-Tay would then be at the centre of a feud with Kanye and Kim Kardashian in 2016 and branded as a liar when she didn't approve of Kanye referring to her in a sexist manner in his song Famous. If you felt that it's funny and cool and like hip hop, like yay, that you love, then I think that people would be like way into it. I need to think about it because I just need to like, you know, you hear something for the first time and you just need to think about it. The incident caused hashtag Taylor Swift is a snake to go viral, with her social media bombarded with snake emojis. It just feels like it's more than music now at this point. The superstar sent shockwaves across social media on Friday when she wiped all of her accounts clean, simply blank space. <laughs> on Monday, she made her return to social media with this video. Tay-Tay would turn the incident by using snake imagery as a promotion for her 2017 album, Reputation, which dealt directly with the themes of media gossip, continuing her trend of career reinvention. Someone uses name-calling to bully you on social media. 
That doesn't have to defeat you. It can strengthen you instead. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. The gold-selling debut from Taylor Swift for a limited time only. The same year Swift released her first album, music streaming platform Spotify was founded, together changing how the world consumed music. But their relationship would soon turn sour. Superstar Taylor Swift abruptly pulling all of her albums from the streaming service Spotify just days after the release of her hot new album, 1989. In a 2015 open letter, her stance on fair compensation from streaming platforms extended to Apple Music, who had decided not to pay artists during the three-month free trial period for subscribers. The move sets up a showdown with industry powerhouse Apple. The letter forced a change, and her music returned to services within two years, and with a vengeance. The pop superstar bringing her music back to streaming services, that's right, back, that happens to be <laughs> the very same day Katy Perry's wow. new album, Witness, that is, is so... being released. I love her as a songwriter as, as well. When the world shuddered to a stop courtesy of COVID-19, Swift revealed a new introspective era in 2020, abandoning her traditional album rollout schedule. She released two albums, Folklore and Evermore, with minimal notice exclusively on streaming platforms. By the time she released 2022's Midnights, Swift would become the highest streamed female artist of all time on Spotify and the highest stream artist on Apple Music. There were so many streams, Spotify crashed, sending Swifties into a tizzy. Honestly, it looks like you listened to a lot of my music this year. Doesn't matter which era you were listening to, I'm very, very grateful to be on your Spotify rap. But fans wouldn't have to wait long for more. I mean, one thing about this album that's really special to me is that it's the first one that I will own. That's my work. Which brings us to Scooter Braun. Ugh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Upon signing a new deal with the Universal Music Group, allowing her to maintain ownership of her music masters, Swift became embroiled in a public dispute with talent manager Scooter Braun and former label Big Machine over the purchase of the masters of her back catalogue. The fact is that private equity is what enabled this man to think that he could buy me. But I'm obviously not going willingly. Instead of agreeing to the terms, Swift embarked on a journey to re-record her previous albums under the moniker Taylor's version. And so I just figured I was the one who made this music first, I can just make it again. So that's what we're doing. The Taylor's versions of her albums scored her millions of dollars of profit and millions of streams. They have sworn to only play my new versions. It's so heartwarming to me. Taylor Swift's career so far is filled with resilience, reinvention, and a deep connection with her audience. As she continues to evolve, her influence extends beyond music, leaving an unforgettable mark on the entertainment industry and the cultural landscape. For me, the, the award is the work. All I want to do is keep being able to do this. I love it so much. It makes me so happy.